Yo, bro, you gonna start? Okay, alright. Um, hi everyone, right? Um, very happy to be here. Um, thanks for inviting me, right? So, um, the topic for today is going to be a practical approach to traditional and cloud native infrastructure management, right? Using GitOps. Uh, I'm actually from Red Hat, I'm the hybrid cloud specialist of Public ASEAN. So, um, the agenda for today, right, we will look at what is GitOps, uh, we'll look at IEC automation in GitOps, and we'll look at, um, you know, GitOps, Kubernetes, multi cluster management, right, and uh, what, for instance, Red Hat is doing in this space. And of course, we'll end off with a QA. and a uh, If anyone has any questions, feel free to just uh, raise uh, the questions, right? So, what exactly is GitOps? Right. Uh, we know that it is really a prescriptive style right, of uh, doing infrastructure as code. We really wanted to use concepts like GitOps where we are deploying and managing large, sophisticated, <coughs> and cloud-native systems that are distributed in nature. We really want to be able to use Git as the single source of truth for decorative infrastructure and applications so that we have a defined state of the infrastructure where it is Git version control. Uh, we will be able to then deploy large-scale uh, infrastructure at ease and with certainty. Right? So it kind of brings together right, developments and operations uh, with a development process and tooling that will allow you to have a consistent means of working across different organizations. It then helps to increase productivity and of course velocity for your deployments and development. So we really consider Git repository as the only source of truth. Uh, manual operations, in this case, it's prohibited, right? We want to ensure that all changes are introduced through Git to perform deployment using continuous deployment, right? So if you look at this, right, we have a contributor pull request. We go through content review from a Git perspective, right? We can use tools, for instance, like Ansible, right, to do a test of the content, generating artifacts, and then we can release it for consumption. Of course, it can be other tools. Uh, in this case, we're just using Ansible as an example, right? So if you want to look at IAC automation and GitOps, I think many of us have actually go through this whole process whereby you know we fill in request forms, we will have to talk to different people, the whole cycle goes on and on, right? We bounce uh, things across and different people will be talking to uh, us and trying to figure out what we need to do uh, accordingly. Right? So if things doesn't go the way that we expect it to be, again we go back to you know, for instance, step two and having to fill in the form again after talking to someone senior or another team. Right, so this whole thing goes on and on. How do we actually get around having to do something that just, you know, isn't that efficient? Then comes this concept of infrastructure as code, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with uh, today. It's really is the capabilities to rebuild the entire infrastructure, right, uh, by having the decorative uh, definition, right, for instance, of the infrastructure defined in YAML files and version control within Git repository. So the best practices really is to be able to do automated testing, right, source control, right, good documentation, and we are able to do automated uh, execution for, for instance, a shared environment. We, which will then allow us to achieve things like security and compliance uh, along the way. So this is just one of the examples in which we can actually use YAML to define the infrastructure that we are actually building. For instance, in this case, we may be deploying different EXXI bad methods, and we can then define the various attributes of uh, this particular uh, infrastructure, right? The link card, the MAC address, for instance, the IP addresses that we are going to assign um, and network information. Right? So in this way, we can very easily just replicate and recreate the environment right? uh, just by having this uh, definitions uh, itself. Right? So of course, all these things will then come with the usage of uh, CICD. Right? Uh, we all know about the importance of having CICD pipelines um, and some of those things, of course, will be things mentioned in the slides. For instance, being able to achieve higher velocity, right, greater productivity, and being able to have this sustainability in terms of being able to do quality um, you know, deployment right, that is stable, right, is easily reproducible. So that is really what we are really uh, caring and looking about right, when, when it comes to having CICD and GitOps infrastructure as code all coming together. 
So often than not, right, uh, customers of ours, for instance, or people that we talk to, will be looking at having this public cloud experience. So how do we actually have this public cloud experience? What are those things that we can actually do uh, in order to achieve this? Is to have CI/CD fully tested uh, deployment method, right? Fully automated, and of course using things like infrastructure as code. So this is how the different public cloud providers is able to achieve uh, this uh, itself. So what happens after this, right? Is that for many of these different uh, people that we talk to, the customers that we spoke to, there is always this thing around, you know, having a manually deployed infrastructure, right? Something that is manually operated, right? You basically have different engineers uh, working on it, uh, different uh, configurations that goes inside. Because of this, sometimes things are prone to error, right? So because, you know, human coming in, we are doing certain things, after a while we may or may not remember what we have done, right? And hence, it becomes fragile as well. So it becomes very difficult to actually be able to reproduce the configurations and stuff that we have actually been uh, doing right, based on this. And hence, we are not able to say for sure that this infrastructure will always behave the way that uh, we want it to be. So then what we want to do next is to be able to combine right, CI-CD together uh, with IAC, right, together with GitOps, and then be able to reproduce the kind of stuff that we are really uh, looking at uh, that looks very much like what the uh, public cloud experience will be giving. Hence, we talk about things like fully automated testing as well as IAC and CICD. So what exactly is needed right, to enable CICD in the infrastructure project? Of course, we look, at, we look at things like infrastructure as code. We need a test environment that is able to replicate very, very closely what we will be expecting within the production environment, right? So with that, we will be able to test uh, using different toolings. It can be things like Vagrant, right? We can be creating a temporary environment uh, using Ansible, for instance, and then doing the required testing and making sure that everything is behaving the way that it should be before we actually uh, you know, deploy out the whole thing into production, right? And most importantly, of course, you know, we will be able to we will need to spend time, we need to spend effort, right, to make sure that everything is working from a process flow end to end perspective. So, what we want to do when it comes to hardware as well is apply the software best practices to hardware. But in this way, we will be able to achieve that velocity, sustainability that we get uh, from the often software CICD that everyone is. Uh, very useful. Right? Over here, we're just saying that we can actually apply all these things to infrastructure as well, and hence improving the cost, sorry, improving the speed and lowering the cost and the risk. Right? And really, infrastructure as code is the foundation right, uh, required to automate deployments and scaling in the physical world, which we know uh, today. So, if you were to look at CITD in practice, Right. How do you know that the operations will be successful? It's because we really spent the time and effort to go and test and make sure that everything is working from a CI perspective. And then, you know, we need to have, for instance, a workflow or pipeline right, that looks through the various steps, test it, make sure that everything is working and running as expected. We have all the destination files being stored inside the Git repository, and then we deploy onto the target uh, infrastructure. So, you know, some of the steps may include things like preparing the virtual environment, right? And some of the other things that we will be looking at, right, uh, when it comes to the actual operations, it could be things like doing deployment, right, upgrade, config changes, for instance, right? And we want to be able to test the results of these operations to make sure that it is actually behaving the way that we expect it to be, right? And then be able to then as part of the CD process, repeat the operation in a production environment, right? Just like what we have seen over here. Right? Various things that we are trying to achieve, we have a pipeline, we can use um, Jenkins, for instance, and we can do things like perhaps using Ansible for doing continuous deployment, right? So those things can all come together, be able to then allow us to do, uh, you know, very, very uh, nice way of doing um, IAC uh, together with CICD, right? So, um, 
we, we talked about all these things, right? New deployment, upgrading, it can be scaling up, scaling down, right? So all those are different uh, use cases that we may be looking at uh, in this case, right? All the management of the changes as well. So for proper CICD, some of the steps, of course, are test, right? That we typically deploy and run it in a virtual environment. So that's what um, we, we tend to do, and we want to make sure that things are consistent uh, in nature. So for instance, if you want to upgrade a uh, private block, right? Uh, what are some of the, the things that can happen, right? We go through different iterations. You can have, uh, you know, uh, following a agile methodology, scrum teams that has user stories and ethics. And we go through different iterations to try to figure out what are the things that is needed uh, to make sure that everything is actually being tested and done in a proper fashion. Right? So for instance, the first iteration, uh, we decided that we wanted to do things like deploying the test environment, we want to in monitor the impact itself, right? Um, and some of the things that may broke, that may break in the middle, right? Uh, could be, in this case, maybe the process did not complete because there's an error, right, in the upgrade uh, itself, where we try to do the orchestration of this whole flow, right? Then we try to figure out what are the things that we can actually uh, resolve and fix along the way, and then we start another iteration. So these things, applies to infrastructure as well, right? which is what we are seeing over here. Right? Beyond just saying that CICD is useful for application deployment, if we are able to use uh, the CICD concept uh, in the infrastructure side of the house, it is also able to help us to achieve a better results and a more consistent way of uh, deploying infrastructure. Right? So in this case, perhaps after the second iteration, we will have fixed the upgrade process. You know, we decided that there are some issues, maybe from a CVE CV standpoint, bugs and errors, right? Then after which we go through multiple iterations before eventually you are able to have a situation where everything is all good and clear. Right? So then we will then deploy the production. We are able to get multiple production clusters upgraded in this case with very high confidence and essentially what everyone is looking for is this one-click operations. And you can have engineers free up their time to work on other stuff uh, along the way, right? So all these things are what we can expect when we start to merge and use the good um, concepts of CICD, IEC together. So one of those things that can happen, right? If you include GitOps inside with IEC, it could be a flow that looks like this. For instance, we have a development workspace that's created. We can have people, engineers, developers, checking out the contents, make the required changes, check it back, right? It triggers off the CI itself, right? The Git process, we will have the pipeline running, doing CI testing, right? And after which, it can send notifications, perhaps by a Slack um, channel, right? And after which, once the changes is being approved and reviewed, reviewed and approved, right, basically, um, and after which you get your plus two, for instance, and everything is looking good, and after which we will trigger off the continuous deployment and delivery portion using things like Ansible, for instance, and we'll be able to then deploy um, the um, environment out. Other things that can happen, right, beyond just the stuff that we were looking at uh, for the infrastructure piece, we may also be able to do things like Golden Image GitOps uh, pipeline, for instance, in this case, uh, using Ansible, right? So what can happen over here is you can have all the information written in the YAML form, right? And if there is a change, let's say in the base image, we can then kick off the pipeline, right, to start a new build of the base image itself. You don't actually have to do everything in this case in a manual fashion, like what is typically being done. But in this way, you get the consistencies and a good way to actually deploy um, the, uh, to create this, this new golden image that we are looking for, right? So if you have a pipeline, it allows easy rebuild of the base image, right? The rebuild image itself is going to be properly hardened and updated with the latest uh, security patches. Something that we can actually do manually, of course, but in this case, we are talking about also introducing things like CICD into this whole um, process itself, right? to be able to then create your hardened um, base OS for the developers to carry out application testing. I don't actually want people to be testing on stale images or images that is actually not properly hardened. If we have a good process in place, 
everyone is able to then use something that is consistent and harden and always with the latest uh, security patches. Right, so then what will happen is that we can extend the pipeline right, to then include things like application, installation, or other custom uh, requirements. For instance, you may need to install antivirus right, on your Windows uh, image, or you may need to install um, you know, other agents, right, the storage agents, the backup agents, or whatever that may be. Right? So those things can also be included as part of the whole pipeline itself. You can then create artifact accordingly just by using um, tools like Ansible, right? Some people may be also familiar with things like Packer, right? So that can also achieve very similar uh, kind of results. So the end results, of course, is we have a much faster reaction time to new CVEs, right, and security vulnerabilities as we are able to build new images very quickly with the pipelines. So an example that we have actually done for customers right today is that we can have the GitLab web hook trigger just like what we saw earlier. Right? It is able to pull the codes for instance from the Git repository. In this case I'm looking at how to create a base image for Windows Server. Just that base image itself that developers can use for testing and uh, doing development work on. Then what we can do of course is can, we can build from scratch right? or we can actually do um, other things along the way if it is for green, uh, brown field, right? So this is assuming green field, whereby we create the ISO, we have the uh, base server, install the operating systems with the uh, auto unattended XML, right? Then we are able to then perform the hardening, the updates. We can do things like installing the VMware tools or updating the VMware tools, antivirus, monitoring agents, whatever, right? Then we can convert that into a golden image, like a VMware chapter or AMI image. Then we can create a workflow. In this case, we are using Ansible, right? So we can create using the Ansible automation platform to do the uh, whole uh, delivery itself, right? So this is a pipeline that we can just uh, integrate with, in this case, GitLab, right? So when we're checking a new set of codes, it just goes inside and we are able to do things uh, quite easily. So I do have something that is being um, Uploaded to YouTube, right? Uh, I'm not going to show all these things today due to the limited timing uh, that we have, right? But uh, you know, feel free to. Uh, I mean, this is going to be shared uh, in, in in future days. You can just uh, refer to this on how the whole thing can actually be built just using uh, you know the whole whole pipeline. So the next piece that I want to go into, right, is really into GitOps and Kubernetes multi-cluster management. Beyond the traditional hardware, the infrastructure that we are also familiar with, which is what we have gone through earlier, we can also see how GitOps can be used in a Kubernetes uh, environment, which is more cloud-native, microservices focused in nature. Right. So we talk about cloud-native approaches. It should really be decorative infrastructure definitions, not very different from how we typically do things, uh, you know, in the traditional world, right? We want to be able to separate software data <coughs> configurations, right? We want to be able to automate everything. In this case, we talk about not having to treat things as pets, but as cattle, right? So rather than trying to repair the whole infrastructure, we want to just do things like a rebuild, which can be very easily achieved if we have things like GitOps concept built into the whole uh, environment itself, right? So the whole thing is around how we can, you know, scale out and not up, right? Because you know, horizontal uh, power auto scaling, for instance, right? We are oriented to, for instance, in this case, containers Kubernetes, right? Having microservices architectures, right? Um, and being able to port. Uh, across different environments. Uh, in, in our case, we're talking about the open hybrid cloud uh, environment where it can be on-prem, it can be inside the public cloud, it can be anywhere else, basically, right? using this uh, cloud-native approach. So what are some of the challenges, right? When you try to adopt Kubernetes on an enterprise-wide uh, basis, you can have things like these parrot clusters being built by different teams, right? This challenge remains, right, even in the new world that we are in with Kubernetes. And um, it can be still spending significant amount of effort to try to meet your security and governance and compliance requirements, right? Uh, you know, in the Kubernetes world, we, we talk a lot about um, shifting that, 
testing everything, the container images early on in the life cycle, right? You have things like ambition control, right? You want to make sure that whatever that you deploy within the environment itself is something that uh, you are allowing it to go in, right? And other compliance, right? It can be things like ensuring CIS, right, on your uh, worker master node uh, within the Kubernetes uh, platform, and other things, right? So, and how do you ensure, right? That everything is being done quickly because you need that high velocity for developers to be able to do things in a very fast fashion. How we look at it, right, really is having this ability to do container as a service capabilities. You are able to automate a standard container platform built within the organization. Right? Um, if you are having your own container platforms, how do you make sure that everything is working the way that you want it to be? Being able to enforce policies and configurations, Right? and using Git as a source of truth will help to address the challenges that we are seeing for some of the teams uh, whom we have been talking to. Of course, to be able to support modern application um, and to be able to do app modernization, you also have to make sure that there are different components that come together. Right? So we touched on some of those earlier in the slides. Uh, you know, the other thing is how do you run it? Observability, right? How do we have a way to do a central monitoring and logging? We can have central Grafana, for instance, centralized dashboard to be able to see the things that's going on within the different Kubernetes clusters that we are managing, right? We want to be able to do DevSecOps, right? Automated builds. We are able to have the unified storage abstraction, right? So, for instance, um, you know, you can be using SAP, right? In this case, um, for instance, that we did uh, Red Hat. Uh, manage, right? We must be able to manage multiple classes because once we start to go into Kubernetes, it is natural and normal, right? To have multi classes uh, over time because we have dev classes, UAT classes, you know, you can be your production classes spanning different countries or different multiple data centers. So how do you make sure that all these things are consistently being built in the way that we want it to be, the governance piece, all these things will have to be considered, right? So this whole thing around shifting left, zero trust security, using policies like um, um, the open policies, right? So OPA, right? Those are also some of the things that we'll be looking at when we ensure that uh, the process is actually uh, has a good compliance and governance, right? With minimum risk. Trusted security supply chain, right? Trusted supply chain as well is also important. Where are you getting the image from, right? Are you getting it from some unknown places, some place in, uh, you know, maybe in uh, Docker Hub or some other place where you, you are not too sure whether this is something that you're looking for. Or you're actually being able to pull it from a place that, you know, uh, is internal within your environment, right? It can be from places like Artifactory, it can be, in the case of uh, Red Hat, it can be from Quake, IO, right? Um, then you can do a signature, digital signature signing of all these uh, different images to make sure that all these things are what you expect it to be, right? Um, using things like RHEL UBI, right, which is secure, right? Then, of course, again, it's back to the IEC uh, concept where we want to automate everything. Making sure that there's workflow orchestration, you do config management, and having this whole thing coming together to ensure that we are able to achieve application modernization, which is what a lot of customers and uh, organizations are looking for these days. And these are the eight ways in which we can actually uh, ensure that everything is working uh, and being built the way that we expect it to be. So one of those things, right, when we talk about GitOps, you will often associate with Argo CD, right, which is very popular these days as well. We, we have clusters and application configurations version in Git, right? Argo automatically syncs config from Git to the clusters. It is able to do things like drift detection, right? Uh, we can do roll back, roll forward. And of course, we have things like customize, right? If you have a large number of different clusters and you have slightly different uh, variations across, for instance, um, your, you know, your um, UAT, SIT environment may be different from production. So how do you have this overlay um, concept using customized try to ensure that all these base configurations remain the same but specific configurations to the environment changes uh, based on the requirements that you're looking for. Right, so those things are what Argo CD is able to help you to um, achieve. Right, we have 
Argo monitoring the changes. You know, we have Git as a source of truth. Any detect any drift being detected will then be auto corrected uh, by Argo, right? And everything will get synced up uh, very nicely. Use it to deploy applications. You can also use it to enforce policies, for instance, if you want. Right? Maybe I say that I need to set up a Helm charts. I need to set up, you know, OpenShift operator, for instance, right? Kubernetes operator. Right? So those things can also be what Argo may help you with. So. In this case, it's just a generic flow on how it looks like. We can have a pull request merge. It just triggers off. It does a sync across different environments, making sure that everything is working the way that we want it to be. If you log on to the Argo CD uh, UI, you will see uh, this, right? Uh, we, we have like being op different objects being deployed uh, according to the way that it's been defined uh, within the Git repository uh, itself. Um, so from how we can manage multiple clusters, right? We have many different open source projects out there, right, in the upstream community that's able to achieve this. And uh, of course, from our perspective, we have this thing called the advanced cluster management, which actually combines all these different, um, you know, good open source projects together to achieve the stuff that we were talking about earlier on having this ability to do uh, central monitoring, central logging, or it can just be, you know, in the case of Submarina, right, your east-west uh, traffic between two different clusters, how you set up the VPN that goes across. You can use things like MetaTree to go and handle uh, the uh, bare metal loads, right, help charts, uh, you know, tunnels, um, and what we mentioned earlier with the open policy agents uh, to do things like emission control, right? I will see the, of course, uh, this is, of course, the upstream of um, the ACM, right? Open cluster management. So various projects can all come together, right? To allow you to be able to have the platform that is able to achieve the central cluster management uh, ability as well as enforce things like governance across multiple clusters. Uh, being able to deploy right uh, applications. In the case of Argo CD, we have the concept of application set. Right, you can actually have a central Argo CD that will then deploy the uh, various um, applications to different clusters. It can be based on labels, for instance, on where you want to put the applications on on the specific cluster uh, that you have uh, from a Kubernetes perspective. Right, so all these things ensures that we have a very consistent way of making sure that things are being uh, done uh, nicely, right? And, and these are all the things that can all come together, integrated nicely to achieve that final objective. Uh, just like what I mentioned, right? What are some of the things that you will be interested in when you talk about multi-cluster management from a Kubernetes standpoint, right? You must, of course, be able to deploy, right? The various clusters and have a central location to manage uh, from a single dashboard, for instance. Right, we talk about things like policy-driven governance. Right, um, you know we can de define the policies. Right, in our case we are using custom resource definition. Right, to define policies that will then allow you to be enforced. Uh, you know, in this case using OPA and advanced application lifecycle management. Right, it can be combined in this case with things like Ansible. Right, they can handle things which are also outside of the Kubernetes clusters. Uh, you know, you may, you may want to update a global load balancer, for instance. You may want to do things like ticket updating in the ITSM system. So if you have all these different projects coming together, you're able to pretty much, on top of what Argo can do out of the box, do that kind of advanced application lifecycle management that we are talking about uh, in this case. The multi-cluster uh, observability, right, for health and optimization, right? Are you able to search for what are the ports of deployment, right, that you have just set up and that's crashing, right, for instance, or something that, that gets killed because it's out of memory? So how do you see everything from a central location? And be able to behave just like how a site reliability engineering team is able to do for a large number of different clusters, right? So that is also something that's important beyond just being able to see the matrix for a single cluster. Right, and the last piece itself is what we were talking about. This whole thing with Submariner, right? So if Submariner comes in, you can have different um, clusters all connected via east-west fashion, right? Without having to go out uh, of ingress and then coming back in again. Then this whole thing is just going to work um, uh, using um, 
cluster set, right? Uh, as well, you know, you can expose it in one clusters, and the other cl clusters can actually consume the service uh, itself if you export it. Um, this is one of those things that we were telling uh, our customers, right? If you combine different things together, you can have a central management cluster that's able to manage target clusters. So it doesn't necessarily have to be OpenShift, right? It's just an example. It's just because, um, you know, obviously I'm from Behead, right? So we talk about OpenShift, but the concept itself is what is more important, right? Being able to use things like ACM, right? To do governance, policies, configurations, compliance, right? You have something like the advanced cluster security for ensuring container security, right? So how do you make sure that things are being secure and built, right? When we talk about that supply chain, um, security, right, um, signing of the image, right, and other things that we look at uh, before we do um, the deployment, right, so that admission control piece, we also want to control the gates that we have, runtime, right, so if the container is running and then we are seeing suspicious activities, how do we actually block um, some of these things so we can kill the container in the extreme case, just to make sure that no one is able to hack onto the system when we detect something that's different from the baseline. And this thing which we have as a for instance, right? Something that is outside the Kubernetes clusters, it can also help, right? Maybe in the pre and post setup of the clusters, you need to maybe configure your call switch or something along that line. Right. An uh, enterprise grade container registry, uh, having things like um, the rehab grade, right? Of course, then you have things like Elastic, you have SSO for instance. So those things can all come together, right, and give you the kind of um, architecture which we think is actually going to be very useful when you are managing multi clusters and using things like GitOps with everything defined properly in YAML definition parts that is native to Kubernetes, right? So I know I'm over time. I uh, will just um, go on to the last slide, um, you know, with the Q and A itself. Um, Bây giờ các bạn, 
Amazon tôi biết Amazon nhé thì hai cái trò này cloud native và những cái ứng dụng mà phải dùng các service của cloud đấy là cái trò marketing ví dụ các bạn mà lên sử dụng uh, deep lớp những cái ứng dụng ấy, mà sử dụng cái dịch vụ Amazon thì các bạn vẫn là login luôn rất dễ vẫn là login đúng không về Amazon nó có nó có Redshift phải nó, à, nó có nó có những những cái, những cái những cái service của Amazon để phục vụ cho cả cái flow của các bạn thì các bạn sử dụng nó vẫn là login luôn đấy thì bây giờ tôi muốn bưng cái đống đấy tôi chạy lên Azure thì sao dở chưa? đó <cười> thì câu chuyện cloud tiếp đây là gì và cái câu chuyện Kubernetes xuất hiện đây là gì là bây giờ ấy là tôi sẽ sử dụng Kubernetes là một cái là một cái nền tảng chung bởi vì thằng nào nó cũng có Kubernetes cả Azure Kubernetes Amazon cũng có Kubernetes đúng không? thì tất cả ứng dụng của tôi tôi sẽ chạy trên nền tảng Kubernetes bởi vì Kubernetes thằng nào cũng chung mà thì nó sẽ để ra cái câu chuyện ở đây là khi mà tôi muốn chạy những cái ứng dụng nào trên bất cứ nền tảng cloud nào thì tôi nhìn thấy các bạn này, tôi sẽ đóng gói nó thành container Tôi chạy trên bất cứ cái Kubernetes này Đó Ví dụ bạn chạy một ứng dụng trên Kubernetes của Amazon này Bung nó sang Azure dễ dàng hơn rất nhiều Tất nhiên nó sẽ có một số những config Nhưng mà nó dễ dàng rất nhiều so với việc các bạn Đi vào lớp tất cả ứng dụng của bạn sử dụng sơ cloud service của Amazon à, Của Azure và Amazon này chạy sang Azure thôi Chết luôn Rất là khó để xử lý xử lại Đúng không? Thì cái câu chuyện này nó sẽ diễn ra cái câu chuyện là Là cái GitOps này ấy, với cái chữ cloud và cái ví dụ tôi nói các bạn thì nó diễn ra như thế nào nó không còn là Azure ở đây nữa Git thì vẫn giữ nguyên nhé nhưng cái phần Ops ở đây ấy, thì nó sẽ dùng Argo CD đấy thì bây giờ thì cả, cả cái <cười> định nghĩa của các bạn cả định nghĩa về môi trường uh, của các bạn ví dụ như kiểu là các bạn đi file là một cái một cái file ra ngồi nè trong đấy là bạn tôi cũng muốn uh, vào những cái post này Vâng, rồi là service của tôi như thế nào, thằng nào gọi ai, vì nhà, vì thế, các bạn, các bạn định nghĩa ra Để đến ít Vì ta trích dường một cái, một cái notification đến Argo CD Argo CD nhận được cái đấy, deploy trên, uh, trên, trên, trên Kubernetes Đó, có vấn đề gì? Thì các bạn, ngoài các vấn đề như monitoring thì thì thì, 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 thì không nói nhá Rất nhiều giải pháp của mình không nói thì, Ví dụ như kiểu nó có một cái, bắt một cái notification về đi Dạ, fail, quay trở lại fix cái git đấy, ờ. thì anh cũng nhận thấy à cái cái file cái này nó đang bị thay đổi ở trên, nó có sự thay đổi rồi, tự động cập nhật ở trên môi trường luôn, à, là nó sẽ tự động cập nhật về 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 cái cái sự thay đổi đấy, bu, 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 là trên Google Test này, thì ngày xưa khi mà tôi làm như cái 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 anh cũng này tôi đi mua cái này cảm thấy rất là nhanh, thực sự nó rất là nhanh luôn, và nó rất dễ luôn bắt đấy nha, rất dễ luôn bắt đấy khi mà, mà các bạn đi nói và khi các bạn đi nói cả những dụng ở trên Kubernetes ấy, mà sử dụng Argo CD và về câu chuyện của Git này ấy, Git Ops mà về Argo CD ấy, thì nói chung là nó, nó giảm thiểu cho mình khá là nhiều những cái những cái tác vụ của mình phải không thể mọc tay để ngày xưa ngày xưa đấy à, vì mình 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 muốn automate cả cái quá trình đi nói CI CD à, ngày xưa ngày xưa thì cũng lắm là đưa lên Git xong rồi lấy cái file đấy copy về cái môi trường của Kubernetes của các bạn cùng lắm các bạn tạo ra những cái file về Batch file, Python, script hoặc whatever Ờ, không phải là chạy à, Nhưng bây giờ không cần Argo CD nó sẽ tự động nhận ra tất cả những sự thay đổi Điều toàn cùng rất là nhanh Đấy là cái câu chuyện của của, của GitOps với Kubernetes Nhưng mà lên một cái tầm cao nữa Thế bây giờ tôi có rất nhiều môi trường Kubernetes rồi Thế làm sao mà tôi quản lý cái app của tôi trên rất nhiều môi trường Kubernetes ấy Thì nó sẽ cần cái multi-cluster management này Đấy thì Hey, hey uh, Anthony, can you can, can you make some slides uh, with the submariner? Sure, this one, right? Yes, uh, yeah, that, this one, this one. <coughs> cái 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 sản phẩm thương mại của Red Hat thì là Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management nhé. Nhưng cái sản phẩm mã mở mở đấy là Open Cluster Management. Các bạn nên gõ cái hấp các bạn có cái này, có cái này nha. Thì khi mà khi mà mình deploy cái open cluster management thì nó sẽ cho mình rất nhiều những cái cái, cái định nghĩa về giả sử như các bạn giả sử bây giờ nhé tôi muốn làm một cái cái cluster về <cười> Kubernetes ở trên Amazon define ra uh, 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 Azure define ra à, như nào vậy thì thằng open cluster này nó sẽ dễ dàng deploy tất cả những cái trên những cái của các nhà số bạn thì bây giờ thêm một cái hay nữa nhé thì cái, cái ứng dụng các bạn deploy trên một cái môi trường Kubernetes đấy ở trên Amazon chẳng hạn thì bạn muốn nói chuyện với thằng bạn em nó nằm ở Azure thì sao? Cũng Kubernetes của Azure thì sao? Đúng không? 
submariner submariner là một cái mình tưởng như nó là một cái a hey, submariner is like the là... Uh, overlay network, right? It's actually able to do VPN tunnel and VPN set up yeah, two yeah. different clusters yeah, so yeah. that your traffic doesn't have to go out, it will just go east fast. Yeah, yeah. Tức là cái 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 nó nó tạo ra một cái nền tảng VPN, đúng không? Thì network của mình nó nó sẽ nó sẽ east west này, đông tây nó sẽ chạy đông nó theo hướng này. Uh, thì ngày xưa tôi đã 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 deploy cái thằng thằng submariner đã xài rồi, mọi người cứ gọi ấy thử chạy cái đi khá là hay ho, nào rất thú vị luôn. Anh ơi, có cái S hai I của Open Shift thấy nó cũng hơi giống uh... Source to Image đúng không anh? Source to Image. Cái hơi giống Avo rồi. Cái Avo luôn à không cái Source to Image chính là khi mà à, mình 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 viết cốt đấy, là một đống đống cốt của mình như này, đống cốt bây giờ mình đóng gói nó thành thành ảnh, nó file ảnh file image như nào? Đấy, thì cái source uh, S2E nó viết tắt từ nó 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 viết tắt từ source to image ấy. thì sử dụng của cái một lớp cốt nó tải lên nha cái đoạn khu vực nó tạo ra một các bạn phải luôn và deploy lên trên cái 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 cluster của Kubernetes các bạn nó nhưng nó hơi khác một chút anh nha bởi vì này này nó uh, cái thằng cái thằng ứng dụng của Kubernetes ấy thì bây giờ sử cả một ứng dụng của mình nó rất nhiều front end và back end thì ví dụ vậy đi nhá Thế bây giờ tôi muốn deploy nó trên một nền tảng Google Test nó như thế nào? Bây giờ tôi gọi file ảnh luôn. Có nghĩa là cốt tôi xong, file ảnh xong. Để tôi muốn deploy cả flow của phần em, back end, back end và muốn tự động hóa ở đấy thì làm như thế nào? Đây là câu chuyện của AOC. Đây là trong cái trong cái file mà các bạn định nghĩa cả cái flow ấy, là các bạn định nghĩa là 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 IP là gì này, Đó, flow đi như thế nào, và bảo là AOC mà deploy giống như cái định nghĩa ở tao đang. bởi vì là tôi nghĩ là vì 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 Anthony nói nó hơi nhanh ấy và nó quá nhiều những cái thông tin trên đây ấy, thì mọi người nó hơi khó để flow nhưng mà tính chung lại nó sẽ là như vậy. Ờ, cho có lẽ là mình đã hết thời gian rồi thì ờ. à, những câu hỏi trao đổi sẽ sau ngày hôm nay thì sẽ là hai tuần để tuần ra trao đổi tiếp tiếp theo là bài tiếp theo là bài học sinh con. Hey, hey, yeah. yeah, Anthony, thank you, thank you so much. I just uh, okay. yeah, I just explain everything to them. <laughs> Thanks for it. All right, all right. If, if I'm going too fast, you know, I'm trying to go 